You guys excited to be in the house of the Lord? Let's go. Um, you know me, I don't come on stage without props, you know that. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. We are so excited that you have come and visited us today. Um, we're, we have a new uh, welcome here table outside. We want to give you a gift, tell you a little bit about who we are, what we are, what our values are, um, and what God has called us to do. Um, also, before I start, uh, we've been trying to promote this uh, men's retreat. Men's retreat is coming up September 26th through the 28th. Um, fellas, I'm telling you, it is life-changing. Um, the friendships that develop, there's a lot of people I've met last year that I'm like friends with right now. It's, 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 it's awesome. So I, I'm not sure if they, oh, they do have a graphic. Awesome. Yes, 26th or 28th, you have plenty of time. If we ask you on the 25th and you said, well, you know, I didn't have enough time. No, you have time. There's plenty of time for you to uh, maybe take some time off, butter up your wife somehow to let you go. Just make it happen, right? All right, you guys excited to get in the Word of God? I had the privilege of uh, going to a missions trip in March of this year. Um, I went two weeks to uh, Peru, and it was mind-blowing, I'm telling you. It was, this is not, I'm, I, guess, I guess it is a promotion, uh, promoting it, but if you've never done, I, I've always been the one that's like, you know what, that is for someone else. Missions is for missionary people, maybe some evangelists. I'm just an average guy. I'll kind of do stuff around the church or at home. But I encourage you, do it at least once in your lifetime, if not once a year. I'm telling you, it is life-changing. It is, it is mind-boggling what God will do in you and in your family because of what you've seen and what you've experienced at a missions trip. It completely changed and wrecked my life. And so, in those two weeks, I saw more salvations and more uh, healings and miracles than I've seen all of my life. Not bragging, it's, it's, it's God, it's all God. But what happened is that I came back and I'm like, what's going on? What, what, why aren't we seeing all of that here? And you, you know what it made me realize? That a lot of people like to use God as their insurance plan that pays the premium to get into heaven. We say yes, God, right? It says in, uh, I believe in Romans, it says where, where uh, if you confess Lord is Jesus, or Jesus is Lord, and believe that he raised him up, you shall be saved. A lot of us have said that and have stepped into the kingdom of heaven. But that is, that's it. For some reason, we stop right there. I love what, um, we were at a conference this week, and one of the speakers said, oh, man, it's just so powerful. It was like, if, if we use God as a bridge to our goal, Jesus, our God, is not our priority. The goal is our priority. We use Jesus to get what we want. We use Jesus, I need this job. Jesus, I got the job, good, I'm good, I'm golden. We use Jesus as a bridge to get where we want to go. And so, we've opened the gates, we've stood there, and we're just kind of waiting. We're good, I've, I, I believe, I've said yes. But are you experiencing the power of God? Are you living in the fullness of what God has available for you? Are you using God to the fullest to what is available to us? A good, a good illustration for me is this. Someone, say, gives me a ticket to Disneyland, right? He gives me a... Full, all-inclusive, you get all the rides, all the food, you get all the games, you even get a, you can go into the back and go see all the characters and to the backstage pass, you get everything. But here is the gates, and I sit at the gates. Everything is happening, right? I think they call Disneyland, what is it, the happiest place on earth? Is that what it is? You are in the happiest place on earth, Everything is available, all the toys, all the games, all the food, everything is at your disposal. You have the ticket, but you are sitting next to the gate waiting for it to close. Why? Why do we not step into everything that is available, right? 
So then I come home and I tell Paul, Paul, I went to Disneyland. And he's like, dude, did you go on that big ride? <sighs> you know what? I, I don't think it's for me. I don't think that big ride, it's, it's not for me. I don't, like, it, it doesn't suit me. He's like, okay, well, did you, um, how about all the food, the good food, the deliciousness, did you try that? You know what, I just don't feel like I'm the right person for that type of food. You know, it's not really the thing that I'm going for here. He's like, wait a minute, okay, well then, how about all those games and every, the characters? You know what, I'm just not feeling it. I, you know, I just kind of just sat at the gate, and he's like, so you were there, but you didn't get the full experience. You didn't get everything that God has made available to you. How about our Christian life? How about our Christian life? Hey, how, how's, your, how's your prophetic life? You know what? I'm not really into that whole prophecy thing. You know what? If the Bible would have said, hey, by the way, my name is Alexi. If the Bible would have said, hey, Alexi shall prophesy, you know what? I would have done it. I would have done it if it said Alexi, but you know, I'm not really into that whole prophecy game. Okay, well, how about, how about praying and laying your hands on the sick and they shall recover? Ah, you know what? Not really my jam. Like, I don't really want to do that. I'm kind of pretty comfortable at the gate. You know, they almost call me kind of like a, what is it, like an introvert Christian, right? I'm an introvert Christian. I'm kind of happy here. It's me and Jesus doing our thing. This is kind of the limit of what I want to be in and exposed to. I, I don't really believe in that supernatural, God-moving power. What if I told you that probably 50% of the Bible displays the power of God? I haven't done the research, but I'm pretty sure about 50% from Genesis to Revelation, we just see power after power. The seas are splitting, uh, demons, you know, being freed, healings. I mean, we're just seeing power of God after power of God after power of God. Oh, my iPad closed. But then you might be saying, well, you know, Scripture says you're saved by faith and not by works, right? Well, yeah, that's true. You are. You're saved. But then what? Right? There's a, scripture, there's a story in the Bible where... Uh, the master gives the servants three, uh, five talents, two talents, and one talent. He gives them all these talents to go and do something. In Scripture, it says in Luke 21, uh, 17, 21, it says, The kingdom of God is in the midst of you. You want to say that again? The kingdom of God is in the midst of you. It's not when we die and go to heaven. It's in the midst of us. The kingdom of God is here and now. So why don't we start utilizing everything that God has available to us? Why are we living this professional Christian lives where we act the part, we look the part, but there isn't much depth. There isn't much fire. There isn't much going on. We're kind of more like, I'm a Christian though. I am a Christian. So the topic of this sermon, it's called the power of God. If you're taking notes, it's called the power of God. First point, the power of God is in the blood of Jesus. The power of God is in the blood of Jesus. We here at City Hill do um, communion every first Sunday of the month, um, kind of the, the way the, the structure and the standards have been here. Um, and every time we do communion, I'm pretty sure all of us have heard this phrase, I do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Have you ever thought about what, what does that actually mean? Do this in remembrance of me. If I stop taking communion, say right from today on until the day I die, I stop taking communion. That's it. No more communion for me. But I continue attending services on Sundays. Um, I'll go to home group, I don't know, maybe once every three months or so. Will I forget about Jesus? Will I forget about what Jesus did on the cross? Most likely not. I most likely will not forget about Jesus and what he did on the cross if I continue going to church and, but not doing communion. So what, 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 what is it? So we're going to reference uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, 
chapter 11, verse 29 through 30. So a little backstory. Um, the Apostle Paul is responding to a letter from the church of Corinth. Um, and he's saying that a lot of you guys have been participating in communion and kind of, it, it's been a big mess. Some of you are getting drunk. Some of you are having big feasts. Some of you are going hungry. Um, it's a mess. You guys are not even, there's no unity. There's nothing going on that what Jesus really meant. And so verse 29 through 30. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak, sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Hmm, interesting. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ. How do you guys discern the body of Christ? I'll give you two points. The body of Christ is all of us, right? We are, he's the head, we are the body. So when we are in unity, we are one as the body. But there's also where we discern of what we are taking into our mouth. Why do we physically drink wine or juice and take bread, right? A lot of our Christianity, we do, you know, spiritual stuff, right? Why can't we spiritually take some bread, spiritually take some wine. It's to remind us that physically I'm taking the bread or the wine and it's physically inside of me. Listen, the blood, every time my heart pumps, right? What is it, like 60 to 100 times a minute? Every time it pumps, the blood of Jesus is flowing through my body. So every time the blood of Jesus touches my kidneys, healing. Every time the blood of Jesus touches my brain, healing. Because we need to discern what the body of Christ actually is. Body of Christ. But then it says, that is why many of you are weak, sick. It's not that if you don't discern, that God is going to send you some disease. God cannot be a disease healer and a disease giver. That's not his nature. What he is saying is that when you don't discern what you're taking, you're gonna, be re you're gonna remain sick. You're gonna remain weak. You're gonna, and some of you are gonna even fall asleep because you don't realize what you are taking in. But if we took communion every Sunday or every first Sunday of the month, and we were like, this is the body of Christ, this is the blood of the lamb, which is actually flowing in me, you, we would see a weakness go away. We would see our bodies restored. And some of us might not even be going to death as quick as, as we need to be. So when I partake in the blood and the, and the body, it lives in me and it flows in me. It makes me realize that Christ is not just some supernatural you know, realm in, in a heavenly realm, but it's actually inside of me. Moses told his, uh, all the Israelites to take a lamb, slaughter it, and put it on the door frames. So what? So that the, I believe it was, so that the destructive plague would go away. If the destructive plague is gonna go away because of a lamb's blood, how much more is Jesus' blood circulating in me? How much more is the power of God, the power of his blood circulating in me? I really pray that as these words are being spoken, that you guys start feeling healings in your bodies. That you start realizing that the blood of Jesus is flowing through all of it. All of my body, the blood of Jesus, and it restores, it heals, and it fixes everything that's not right. In Romans 12, 1, it says that let our bodies be living sacrifices. Living sacrifices. The whole Bible talks about sacrifices, but they're usually what? They're usually dead. All the sacrifices, in order for it to be appealing to God, it's usually they kill them, and then they burn them, and that's a sacrifice. But what Jesus did on the cross forgave our sins, and he made us into a living sacrifice so that we don't have to die to be a sacrifice. Let your bodies be a living sacrifice. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you. 
It's not a metaphor. It's definitely, I mean, it, it could be, but it's not a metaphor. It's not where that we're kind of like, well, Christ is in me. No, he's literally the blood and the body. That's why we physically take communion because the power of God is in the blood of the lamb. A lot of us get stuck, please hear my heart. A lot of us get stuck at the cross. A lot of us see Jesus at the cross, which is a good thing. But we need to realize that he actually died. He went to hell, got the keys of death and Hades, came out and resurrected. And now we can live in that power that he carries. A lot of us are stuck on this cross my saints, my saints, my saints, he's dead, and that's it. But there's more. He came back alive with the keys of hell and Hades. Second point. The power of God is in God's word. The power of God is in God's word. Let me ask you this question. What do you take more to heart, God's will or God's word? God's will or, God, or God's word. I grew up in a Christian family. Uh, my dad is actually, he's one of the pastors here at, at a local church. Um, awesome family. I mean, we, we, you know, I grew up going to church, to youth. Um, and there was this phrase that I heard so often. The will of God. The will of God. The will of God. Why, is, why does she have cancer? It's probably the will of God. Okay, why did that lady with six kids, young kids, die? Must be the will of God. I felt that we started putting a lot of our circumstances and our issues into this category of the will of God. But my question is, what does the word of God say? What does the word of God say? Because the word of God and the will of God can never contradict. It can never contradict. Don't get me wrong, you will have hardships even if you're in the will of God. Let's, let's do some research. We got Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. Mark 4. All right, we're going to read the, this entire verses. It says, when day, that day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Will of God? Is it the will of God? Right? Jesus says that I only say and do what the Father told me. So he told them, let's go to the other side. Are they in the will of God? 100%. They are in the complete obedience and the complete will of God. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious uh, skewel, squail, skewel, came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in, a, in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said, he said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Why do you, do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So, completely in the will of God. He told them to go, completely in the will. They're, they're you know, rowed in the boat, a storm happens a storm happens that takes over I mean a lot of these guys that were with him were fishermen so obviously they knew what the storms were so it wasn't something new to them but it must have been pretty severe but you know what the issue is they forgot who was in the boat with them they forgot that the that Jesus was in the boat with them Jesus didn't say why didn't you wake me up earlier I would have stopped this earlier they had to wake him up. They were like, Jesus, get up. Help us. Don't you see what's going on? And he's like, what are you doing? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know the authority that you carry? When you are in the will of God, you will have 
windstorms and you know there will be difficulties but as long as you know who the Jesus is as long as you have Jesus in the boat with you you do not be afraid there's nothing that can you know frighten you because you have Jesus in the boat in John 1:14, it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us the word became flesh who's that who's that church Jesus as long as you have the Word of God in the boat with you it don't matter what happened it doesn't matter because the Word of God is with you he gives you authority and you read the scriptures this book is alive this book is living but for some reason we take this book a little bit more serious than our relationship with God this is just ink and paper right probably producing some some warehouse we probably put it on top on, on the top of our stack we make sure nothing goes on top right because if I do lightning will strike me um, if, if it's bent somewhere I mean that's it I'm going to hell right the point of this book it's it is not regulations and rules and you know you know how we should act the point of this book is for it's for you to get to know the author of this book it is for you to know his love his goodness and his perfect and good will for your life as long as you have this in your boat you will not you don't have to be afraid you have authority to stop things you have authority to say when stop and it will stop but you have to have a relationship and intimacy with Jesus and the way you do that is through the Word of God the Pharisees knew the Torah from cover to cover but they did not know the author from cover to cover do we use this Bible as our ceiling or, or as our foundation ask yourself a lot of us like to use scripture as our ceiling it doesn't say well it does say right lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover well if it would have said Alexi lay your hands well then I mean come on when we use this Bible as our foundation there's nothing that's gonna stop us for, because we have the authority of Jesus he said you will go and do bigger and greater things than what you've seen the power of God is it God's will that everyone be saved yes or no is it God's will for everyone to be healed Woo. if it's God's will to heal everyone why isn't everyone getting healed start start getting getting to know the author of this book this is going to lead you through so many ups and downs through mountains through hardships this is what saved our marriage this is what saved my life this is what brought me to Jesus like I've never seen before I've been a Christian for all my life pretty much but it hasn't been the last four years where I've actually started reading this book and going through it and indulging in it this is power church this is power this is authority this is the power of God is right here when I'm in the when I'm, I'm in my boat I'm like God your scripture says do not be afraid here I am and he gives you peace it says that the in Romans it says that the kingdom of God is not of eating or drinking but of peace joy and righteousness where is that peace and joy right here start indulging in this book the power of God is in the book the power of God is in Jesus but the book is Jesus the third point the power of God is in the Holy Spirit Let's read John 14, verse 16 through 17. John 14, verse 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees nor knows him 
but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. In Acts 2, it talks about the day of Pentecost. So before Jesus left, he said, hey, I will send you an advocate. He will come. He will comfort you. He will live inside of you. In Acts, Jesus is gone. And they're, they're collected or they're gathered in a room. And they started just seeking the face of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit just uh, descended on them. And then they saw some, you know, they saw some fires on, on each person. Please hear my heart. The significance of the day of Pentecost it's not, it wasn't speaking of tongues. It wasn't the fire that they saw. There's a lot of people who speak tongues but lie. There's a lot of people who speak tongues but cheat. There's a lot of people who drink alcohol but are able to speak tongues. The significance, it's actually found in Acts 2, verse 45. Acts 2, 45. It says, They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. The needs of their neighbors and loved ones became as significant as it was their lives. They started selling everything they had because they knew that their, the neighbor, their parents, their relatives were all in need. And so they knew that if they're struggling, we are gonna, they are one body. The unity that cre was created, that's what the Holy Spirit does. It makes you... Put the unity, the love between each one of us. It makes us build each other up. Also, there's more. In Acts 2, 43, it says, everyone, who was, everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. The Holy Spirit is in us for me, but he is on me. For others we we <laughs> we gotta walk in power church we really need to walk in power a lot of us love to be seated right there but there's so much more available to us and we limit what God has prepared for us in Acts 5 15 it says that the Apostle Peter was walking and they would lay people down on the street so that what? His shadow would at least go over them and they would get healed. What is it? What's so powerful about his shadow? It's not. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not limit the anointing of the Holy Spirit to what you think you can do. There's so much more beyond what we can think what the Holy Spirit can do. How about the lady who was... Um, Sick for 12 years with bleeding, right? She's like, only if I touch his wardrobe. What's so special about his wardrobe? Nothing. It might have even been secondhand or thirdhand passed on to him. But it's, it's because who's wearing it. It is because of the Holy Spirit that radiates that people are getting healed and restored. And marriages are combined together. And the power of God is seen through all of it. Can I get someone on the keys, please? You might be asking, how does this practically look like? How do I, I have so much sin, right? This sin is eating me up. I can't really walk in a power because, I mean, you don't understand. I, you know, I'm kind of addicted to pornography. Like, like man, God doesn't really want me to do that, but it's, it's an addiction. It's, 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 it's the season I'm going through right now. A lot of us, I've heard, um, you know, people pray, for, you know, for other people, and they say, "God, deliver, deliver my spouse from alcohol. Deliver my God, God, deliver my spouse from alcohol. Let, let him not drink anymore." Have you ever wondered if He would have delivered him from alcohol? Right here. All right. This is this is the inner man, right? The inner man. This is the alcohol. This is the problem that he has or she has. God delivers you from the problem. You are now completely empty. You are completely empty. Scripture says that when the house is super, it's all clean, this guy will come back and he sees that the house is all clean. He'll go and he'll grab seven more homies 
So he'll, he'll come back. Then he'll bring fear with him. Then he'll bring lust with him. He'll bring more than slander with him. He'll bring pornography with him. He'll bring anxiety. And he'll come and start living inside of you. I was... <laughs> I was addicted to pornography for 11 years. <laughs> I tried so many different ways to stop. I would read books, 10 steps to quit pornography. It didn't help. I'm like, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna just stop myself. I'm gonna not do it. God, I'm not gonna do it failed it wasn't a point in my life when I said God I'm done I'm done with all of this and then I started reading the Word of God the Word of God became so precious to me the blood of Jesus saved my life the blood of Jesus became so precious to me and slowly by slowly I was like, Holy Spirit, come live in me. Do what you want to do. Let the power of God just flow as you wish. And slowly but slowly, everything that was inside of me, that was not of God, it left me. I, I would do more water, but we don't want to clean up. Slowly but slowly, everything just overflowed and it just completely left. Stop focusing sometimes on your sins. Sometimes we focus so much on our sins and to be these perfect people. I want to challenge you, church. What if we started filling ourselves up with more with the blood of Jesus? What if we started discerning what the blood of Jesus is? What if we started spending more time in the word of God? What if, this, what if this became our number one, you know, every Sunday I get a, uh, on my phone, how much time you spent on your phone? And I, you know, I don't know how many hours it was. And I'm like, is that more hours than I spend with the Bible? What if this became our number one, you know, reading material? The material that our eyes looked at. What if we just spend more time with the Holy Spirit in the secret room? What if we just spend more time in the, with the Holy Spirit? He's a person. Jesus he's a person that you can just talk to he has feelings he has emotions I want to challenge you today would you guys rise Jesus I want to challenge you guys if you're tired of sitting right here if sitting right here is not fun for you anymore, if you want to experience the power of God, if you want to live in the full presence of God, what's stopping? What's holding you back? Just ask yourself that question. What's holding you back from not sitting here, but living in a fullness, taking advantage of all the rides, of all the food, of all the games, of going to the backstage and utilizing everything that God has available to you? What's stopping you back? What's holding you back? Also, if you have never accepted Jesus as, the, as your Lord, if you've never said, I confess my sins, tomorrow isn't promised, church. Tomorrow is not promised. I want to challenge you. Accept Jesus today. Declare that Jesus is Lord. Believe that he has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Hey, thank you for watching City Hill Church YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss when we go live or post new content. Make sure to leave a comment about what spoke to you, where you're watching from, and how can we pray for you. And if you would like to support the ministry, you can give right on our website at cityhillchurch.org and help us keep reaching people for Jesus. Thank you and be blessed.